Hey everybody, happy Friday. Welcome to day four of our daily creative challenge for Photoshop. I'm Kathleen Martin. I've been your host all week and I'll be your host all of next week to learn some cool Photoshop basics. If you are more advanced, we are just sharpening our Photoshop skills a little bit more. And by the end of this two week challenge, we're gonna have a beautiful portfolio piece that you can share with future employers, your friends, your family, or just yourself. If you just wanna be proud of yourself for your new Photoshop skills. If you're just joining for the first time, that's all right. We've had a full week of challenges so far, but you can always go back and watch the previous ones with the starter files. They're there forever for you to watch. And if you have been following along all week, give me a shout out in the chat. I'd love to say hello to you. This is the last day of the first week, so we are gonna have the weekend off. You can take that time to catch up on your projects if you need to, or thanks Desmond, welcome again or uh, you can just come back on Monday and start again with project five. The Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge offering the first nine pack of drinks, yes. So that's a great segue, thank you, Sean. We have been working on, let me get rid of all this stuff. We have been working on drink labels, specifically can labels. I'm making a cool shrub soda six pack. It's a little bit of like a vinegary bubbly drink, not for everybody I know. Um, but you could make any kind of six pack you want, whether it's just a seltzer water or it's soda pop or it's a beer, whatever you want, maybe some mixers. I saw that actually on Discord yesterday. Someone is making like a pre-mixed mixer pack. That's super cool. What's up, Ant? Good to see you. So today we're gonna to be talking about clipping masks and that is how I created the design that you see on the screen right now. Super duper easy workflow in Photoshop, probably one of the simplest. So if you are still getting your bearings in Photoshop, this is a great place to start. You can also make sure to register for this challenge if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. That's how you can get notified every day for the different challenges. Just click this blue button and you can scroll on down and see that today we are working on clipping masks and this is where you can get the starter files. So I'm gonna be working with a couple different pattern images, some black and white patterns just for the occasion, um, as well as a mock-up if you haven't gotten that downloaded yet. So just go ahead and click get started and that will take you to that download link. And you can always watch the replays here. So just click the watch video button from any of the challenges that you might've missed and you can always go back and watch. There won't be a live chat because it's a replay, but it's better than nothing, right? What's up, Larissa and Chad? Good to see ya. Steve, hello as always. Happy Friday, indeed. Anybody have any fun weekend plans? Tell me all about them. I'm curious. Okie doke, we'll talk about Discord at the end. Let's just jump right into our workflow for the day. What's up, Marsha? How are ya? Okay, so I have Photoshop open and I have my can mock-up open. Your mock-up will probably look more like that, kind of, <laughs> uh, with no design in it. So if you do want to put your own custom design on a mock-up, we're gonna open up this mock-up file, twirl open the design layer folder, folder layer, layer folder. <laughs> And I'm going to double click on this thumbnail right here. This is a smart object, which will basically take us into a new Photoshop document where we can make all of our design changes, save that, and it will update this 3D mockup with our changes. So double click on into that. I already have it open, so it's over here. And as you can see, it is just a almost square canvas that we can design on. Jason, you're doing a small concert. Are you doing it or are you watching it? Oh, it's next weekend, okay. But that's cool, what kind of music? Nick says I'm working on a logo design gig this weekend. Are you excited about that, Nick? I know sometimes people feel more creative on the weekends. So before we get started on our actual um, clipping mask workflow, I'm just gonna turn off all of the layers that we don't need right now so that we can just start fresh. So the third, first thing we wanna do with this workflow is we are going to find a typeface that we like. We're basically just making a really large blown up letter form or monogram. This is a good workflow as well if you have like a personal logo that you wanna make. Just use a giant version of the letter with a cool font. You're like 90% there already. What's up, Gus? Nyx is excited. Good, that's exciting. I'm excited you're excited. So the first thing we wanna do is go to our text tool over here on the left in the toolbar. 
I'm just gonna click and that's gonna fill in some lorem ipsum in our beastly font. That's the font that I've been using for as kind of my brand font for this entire project. You don't have to use it. I'm gonna show you how to find thousands of other fonts right now, but I'm just gonna type in a capital W. It's already set to pink because that's what I was using. So that will work just fine for me. I'm gonna find the center of my project with these nice magenta lines. Those are smart guides. They help me figure out where the center is and how things are aligned. Marsha, you're doing well? I'm glad, I'm doing well too. All right, let's increase the size of our typeface because we want this to be a giant blown out monogram. My favorite way to do this, instead of grabbing a side and increasing it, um, that works, but you'll notice when you do that, if you come over here to your properties, check out the weird text size that you have, 1,311. I don't think anyone would enjoy having that in their brand guidelines. They would probably want 1,000 flat or 1050 or something like that. So what I like to do is I like to either just come over here and type it in, maybe 1,000, oops, not zero, 1,000, or click and scrub on the little T icon, and you can increase or decrease the size in increments that way. Yeah, I heard that the Pacific Northwest is having a uh, heat wave this weekend. I hope you guys stay safe out there. I know air conditioning isn't as much of a thing up there. Okay, cool. Looks good. Now, maybe I wanna play around with different typefaces. With my type layer selected, I'm gonna to come to my characters panel. And if you hear a lawnmower in the background, that's just the sweet symphony of the neighborhood. <laughs> and we can come and get live previews of all kinds of different typefaces. So you'll have a bunch of different system fonts already downloaded and available. And you'll have some fonts that are specifically from Creative Cloud. So for example, this adhesive seven typeface is one that I have synced, one that I have grabbed down from the cloud and brought down to Photoshop. So that's pretty cool. It already has some texture. Now say, for example, you want to use this one, but you don't have it synced to your Creative Cloud um, subscription yet. I'll show you how to do that. If you want to find tons more fonts, you're just going to come all the way to the top right of this fonts panel. Click this little tiny Creative Cloud icon. You can see it right there. And that's going to open a new web browser for you. Or you can just go to fonts.adobe.com. That's like the real <laughs> website for this. And here is where you can check out thousands of typefaces. Here's that adhesive font that I was talking about. You can see that I already have it activated. I could deactivate it. In the bottom right, you see you have deactivated this font. Or I can jump back into it, view the family and activate it again. All right, so let's find an alternate typeface to use for our can. Since I'm just gonna be using a large W, I'm just gonna put that in as the sample text. We're gonna increase the text size so we can see some really good previews. I'm gonna scroll on down. This is interesting, it's almost like two U's, W, next to each other. This one's really fun. This one we could put some really nice textures within. So let me pop into this one. It is Sutura. And you can see it mocked up nicely, some different examples of how you might use it. I'm going to quickly activate my font and let's see how quickly it actually activates within Photoshop. There's also a recommendation. So fonts like this, if you like this. So this is called Marshmallow Script. We can jump over here, check it out. See if we like it more. I think I like the original one the most. So let's jump back to Photoshop and see if it is in here. So it's up here at the top, filter them by all classes. Maybe you definitely want uh, a serif typeface. So it has the little feet on the top. You can check out all of those there. Maybe you want something that is decorative. You can explore all of your decorative typefaces, but I just want to filter by the ones that I've specifically synced from Creative Cloud. So I'm going to scroll down to the S's and see if it is there. Do, 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 do. I kind of forget what it was called. I don't think it's here yet, but that's all right. It's still coming down from the cloud. While we wait for it, let's just go back 
to our original W using the beastly typeface. Is someone riding a jet ski nearby? I know. I know, perfect timing for some yard work on the block. <laughs> Would probably help if I turned on a little bit of music. Let's get some ambiance going on. Maybe that'll help. Marsha says, I got a can of kombucha yesterday to inspire my design, sipping it now. Marsha, that's amazing. Kombucha is one of my favorite drinks. What flavor did you get? That's a great ex example of doing something for the design, but really it's just, maybe you just want a kombucha. Who knows? Okay, so we have our nice W. Now let's pop into my libraries and grab some patterns and use a clipping mask to apply our pattern to our letter form. So I have a library of all of the images that I'm using in this DCC, but you can also use the patterns that I'm using from those starter files that are over here. So Clipping Mask Get Started, you'll find a bunch of patterns in there, or you could make your own. I highly recommend it, actually. Top five in your playlist, go. Ooh, yeah, what's everyone listening to these days? Let me know. I've been listening to a lot of sad indie a lot of Phoebe Bridgers, some Bright Eyes, you know, that summertime sadness, but not in a bad way. <laughs> okay, let's drag out our first pattern. Just gonna grab it from my library, add it to my canvas, grab a corner so it is nice and big, hit return, and we're done. Or are we? We want this pattern to be within our letter. There's a couple different ways that we could do this, but I think the least destructive and the most simple way to do it is just with the clipping mask. So clipping masks are really, really simple. All it is is it's gonna clip the layer you have selected to the layer below it. In this case, we've got our pattern layer and I'm gonna clip it to the W layer. So to do that, I'm just gonna right click on it. We are going to select create clipping mask. And now we have a pattern filled ye uh, yellow. <laughs> Watermelon, W, <laughs> my mind, oh my gosh, it is Friday. So you can see when I do that, this little arrow pops out that shows that, hey, this is clipped, it's almost like a little paper clip to the layer below. One of the easiest ways to undo your clipping mask is to hover between your two layers, hold Alt or Option, and you'll see that it puts a little no line through the clipping mask arrow, click, and it unclips. And as you might expect, if you hold Alt or Option and hover between them when there's no clipping mask, you can easily make one. Whoa, Chad, Jurassic 5 radio on Pandora. Very nice. Marsha, this is your first time drinking kombucha pink grapefruit. Oh, that sounds so good. I'm inspired to go get that as a little afternoon snack. Roseanne says, I've been doing a fruit theme, but now I don't want to do watermelon. What other letter would work? Roseanne, anything you want. Hmm. Are there any fruits that you haven't covered yet? Think about the fruits. Think about what first letter of a fruit has the nicest shape. You might be able to do like an O for orange. That's nice and symmetrical. A's are nice and symmetrical. Apple. B, I don't know if, I mean, it's cool, but maybe I'd stick, stay away from a B. Totally your choice. Okay, so let's layer some more patterns onto our W and connect them with a clipping mask. Going back to my library, let's grab another pattern. This one's really cool. Size it up. You can hold Option and grab a corner and that will size it from the center. Do that quite often. And I'm gonna kind of stack my layers where the letter automatically or naturally breaks. So right here, you see this is where the two halves of the W come together. I'm just gonna match my pattern right there. Whoops. Let's go back to my layers and clip this layer to the one below it. Holding Option, hovering between the two layers, click, and there we go. From here, I can move it up and down to see how I like it. I will scooch it back down because I do like it hitting right there. Looks good. Apple would be cool. I agree, Roseanne. I agree. You could even do like an ABC as well. Um, apples, bananas. What's a fruit that starts with C? Cantaloupe? 
That'd be a nice combo, actually, like a fruit punch flavor. ABCs of fruit. All right, let's drag in our floral pattern. This one isn't quite black and white. It's like almost beige and navy, but it's gonna work just fine for us. We'll place it. We will clip it. See how that's starting to look. It's almost looking like a newspaper cutout. Dig it. And let's add one more. Ooh, this one's awesome. And I'm just gonna apply this one, I think, to the left. Make it a little asymmetrical. Cool, and maybe I'll move this one over to the right and down a bit. Nice, we have our awesome Frankenstein letter form going on. So let's add a little bit of color, jazz it up a bit before we say goodbye. <laughs> Norsh, a seaweed, a kiwi, kiwi with a C. Oh, hey, cherry, yeah, a cherry monogram and then making like a cherry pattern behind it. That would be sweet, a simple design solution. Okie doke. So the cool thing about using clipping masks is I can come back to my text layer and I can change my typeface and it will keep the clipping mask within uh, put together. It won't break anything. So I can explore different options, maybe come down and see if I have some down here at the bottom that might be a good option. It might require you to zhuzh things around a little bit, move things around, but at least they will still be clipped in the correct order. That's interesting. The line art one is amazing. You like it, Christelle? Sweet. You should definitely play with it for your challenge. Okay, the last thing I did in my final design is I added a little bit of color. So let's use a layer style. We learned about layer effects and layer styles in one of the very first days to add a drop shadow. It's the bottom option. Now it's not gonna be like a soft diffused drop shadow. It's really just gonna be more of like a hard edge of color on the left side. So I'm gonna change my angle, change my color maybe to something more like goldenrod-y, increase my distance, Maybe keep my angle at a perfect zero degrees. You can change the size, but I really just want it to look like it is popping out of the left side of this letter. Very nice. You could come here and add some strokes if you want to have some fun with it, but I'm just going to stop with the drop shadow. Cool. And then to add a little bit more color, I am going to make a solid color fill layer. Choose a blue. Let's change the blend mode. Maybe, maybe we'll just keep it normal and clip it. And then we can change the blend mode to multiply. And then using the layer masks, which we talked about layer masks a lot yesterday, we're kind of putting together a bunch of our workflows we've learned this past week. <laughs> and I am going to fill my layer mask with black so that it erases all of the blue, switch my foreground color back to yellow, and use my marquee tool to make some square or rectangular marquees. Maybe we will make this entire one blue. Maybe we'll choose this one. Okay, so we have three selections right now. And if I use my paint bucket tool, which is the G hotkey, you might have to do shift G to cycle through a couple of them. Fill that in. And that's gonna fill three areas with blue. Pretty cool. Gregory, what's up from Haiti? Hey, Haiti. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. If I need to change the letter to like an O or an S, oh, I missed your question, Azaz. You can totally do it. Your type layer is still live. So I can just go back in with my type tool, type an S, you're good to go. You might need to change the position of your layers a little bit, but 
and is still all functioning. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn back all my layers to make sure that my label is looking good. Not that one. Drink name. Maybe I'll even change this to be pink so it meshes a little bit better. Maybe we'll change this to be, whoa, that's bright, but kind of cool. Maybe if we increase the brightness a little bit and then change the color of this stroke, maybe even just turn it off. This mock-up's really cool because you can change all of these aspects, all of the colors, depending on your daily design. Make this pink, make this pink as well. I'm just using the eyedropper to grab the colors, turn off the line. I think we just need to make this a little closer to white so that it doesn't compete with the pink too much. Very good. Okay, we're gonna save it. Let's see how it looks. Cool, looking good. Maybe I need to decrease the size of my W just a little bit so it fits a bit better. Nudge it down. Save it. All right, I think I dig it. What do y'all think? Maybe we like the blue version that I did in my first time. No, I like the one I did but I'm gonna export it, put it on Discord for you guys to give me a little bit of feedback on, and then I can make changes as needed. So let's go export, quick export as PNG, just get it out of Photoshop as easy as possible. Let's see, put it on the desktop and call it day four. Seltzer. Thanks, Steve, appreciate it. All right, let's pop on over to Discord and get some feedback. Got it. Thanks, Discord. So if you want to join us on Discord, it's just a 24-hour party over here. You can go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. This is where you can post your work to get feedback every single day. Throughout the weekend, if you're continuing to work, you can post it here and there will be people live and around to give you some help. So let's add our image. Go to my desktop. And there it is. Day four, seltzer. How do we feel about the color choices? I might go back to blue. Who's to say? And I see who's this that just uploaded a bunch. Kirsty just uploaded a lot of cool designs working with that awesome kaleidoscope tool in Photoshop. That's awesome. And you can always just scroll through here and check it out. Give people some feedback. You can easily choose someone's work to give feedback by just clicking this little reply button above their post or below their post. And with that, I think I'm gonna leave y'all. So make sure you stick around for more Adobe Live coming up right after me. I'm gonna be back on Monday. So no streams on Saturday or Sunday from me, but come back on Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern for our day five challenge. And we're gonna jump into the second week of our challenge. Thanks everybody for being here. It's been an awesome week. I'm so proud of all of the accomplishments you have uh, come across and all of the work that you've shared in the Discord. It is quite humbling and really amazing. So keep it up and I will see you next week. Goodbye everybody. For real now, bye. <laughs>